what I'm doing here is trying to do the foundation or the assembly of this scale model. All the recording we've done over the last two years, uh, all the ferro arm work downstairs, that produced uh, wireframe drawings. And from those wireframe drawings, we were able to create what we call digital solids and then have those manufactured and shipped back to us. And now we have one to 10 scale pieces of every part of the ship. The entire model is going to be around 1,500 pieces. And there's only about four pieces right here. So you can imagine it's going to be about three and a half meters long. The nice thing about using this type of, it's called laser sintering, is that it uh, creates a flexible, kind of a wood-like object, so it allows us to replicate characteristics of the original timber in the hull when the ship was built. So this is just an average size plank. It would have been um, ten times as long on the ship, but in this case we've scaled it down so that it's easier to work with. This is an average uh, floor timber or a f part of the frame in the vessel, and it's not so flexible, but it'll give a little bit, so when we go to get more of the model built, we'll be able to flex it and shape it in order to kind of reshape um, the timbers in order to figure out what the original hull form was, and that's one of the main goals of this work. And uh, A, original hull form, and B, to create an interactive display for the public. This is a 1 to 10 scale model of the Newport ship. What this model helps us understand is the overall complexity, how the timbers fit together, and also helps us understand the construction sequence. The model is not complete though, it's simply a model of what was actually found during the excavation. The ship was actually substantially bigger than that. Part of it had been dismantled sometime in antiquity. So what we've done is uh, we've modeled what we had pieces for, and then what we don't have pieces for, we're trying to uh, ghost in, ghost in the missing parts with these uh, uh, plastic uh, battens. And uh, you can see what's emerged is a much better idea of what the ship actually looked like. We think this is about the height of the gunwale, or the topmost strake in the ship, and maybe the deck would have been somewhere around at this level. But you can see how big of a hold there was, and it's a, you know, it's a very well-designed merchant ship. Right now it's a big experiment. We're uh, trying to figure out what the ship looked like simply by more or less through trial and error pretty confident we were very close to the original shape. If you pretend this is the height of the ship, you can see just how much of the ship we've got and how much is missing. This is a 1 to 10 scale model. If you're standing here, you're about that tall. So it's a very big ship. The best part about this modeling is that it shows what the overall hull would have been like in the mid-15th century. And something we just don't know. They don't have drawings, they don't have plans of ships from this period. So this is why this work is so important, because it's you know, a singular opportunity to study this. This is going to be our three-dimensional blueprint that we follow when we go to reassemble the ship, which is the ultimate goal of the entire project, is to actually get the medieval ship rebuilt or reassembled using the original timbers and on display 